Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about working with external JavaScript files. Up until now, we've seen two different ways of adding JavaScript to our web pages. The first was inline, and just to remind you what I mean by that, it's where we did the onload equals alert hi from inline. So we added our JavaScript right inside of our body tag uh, through the use of the onload uh, attribute. That was one way to add uh, the code. The other way was through a script tag. And this is what we've been doing all along. And so inside of here, we were able to type in hi from script tag. And so let's just see those in action because I'm going to delete them here really quick. Hi from script tag, hi from inline, okay? And uh, in both of those cases, uh, I made the point of saying, let's go ahead and just uh, delete that. I made the point of saying that uh, uh, that this is not the right way to add JavaScript to your web pages. I did it to keep things simple, but from now on we're going to be taking the correct approach. The right way to add JavaScript to your application is to add it to one or more external files that only contain JavaScript. The convention that most developers use is to add a file extension with a .js at the end, but I don't believe that's a requirement. Let me show you what I mean by by this. So first of all, let's go ahead and continue to use our script tag. We're just going to add an additional attribute, src for source. And in this case, we'll just keep our source file in the same directory as our HTML page. So I'll just type in script.js. Right now, we need to create a script.js file. So here I'm just going to type alert hello from script.js. I'm going to save this on my desktop, fundamentals folder, all files, script.js. Save. All right, so now let's see this in action. You can see our new script file. You can see that in my particular case, uh, it's recognized as a JScript file. Let's not uh, worry too much about uh, that file type. Um, let's just go ahead and double click our web page that references it, and you can see that we get the message hello from script.js. Great. In fact, we can reference more than one script file, and you often will do that. I'm just going to copy this entire uh, line of code and then just change the source to another.js. And then I'm going to save this as another.js. So now we have two files, and I just want to change what this one says, another.js. All right. So if we were to open up c9js11.html, we get hello from script.js, hello from another.js. All right. Okay, so the big question you should be asking yourself is why this emphasis? Why are we switching gears here, why are we emphasizing to only write code in external JavaScript files? Well, using external JavaScript files has a couple of big advantages. First of all, it keeps a clean separation of concerns. Ideally, the content will be kept in the HTML files. Ideally, the presentation of that content will be kept in the CSS or cascading style sheet files. And the behavior will be kept in JavaScript or .js files. So why is this important? Well, generally, a clean separation of concerns is a software development principle established decades ago that helped to make code more manageable and maintainable. Also, from an end user perspective, there are many different clients of web pages, uh, from 10-year-old phones 
with rudimentary web browsers to old web browsers to screen readers for people with vision uh, disabilities. So keeping your HTML free of any presentation or behavior allows for a wider audience to consume your content. And then secondly, it keeps your code reusable so that it can be ported into multiple projects. For example, we're going to look at the jQuery library soon. And there are other JavaScript libraries that are available. In fact, many uh, are available. And they're reusable because it, all the code belonging to that library has been kept in its own uh, separate .js file. So you can create your own libraries for personal use or for the company that you work for or share them on the web in the same way. Furthermore, we're going to see a little bit later on how using an external JavaScript file is just one step towards our effort at making our JavaScript code unobtrusive. And so we'll learn about how to keep from polluting the global scope or rather the global namespace uh, in an upcoming lesson and that will round out our knowledge on the topic. But from this point on, we're only going to be using external JavaScript files because I want you and I both to be in the habit of following this best practice. So from now on, you and I are not allowed to write any JavaScript code in our HTML pages. Okay, got it? All right, so that's all I wanted to say in this lesson. We'll build on this idea as we move forward. See you in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.